So that was a movie. The new Pixar movie, Turning Red. What did we think? Maybe kind of blue. Because of sadness? Actually, this one wasn't that sad, and that's what I kind of liked about it. So we've seen the trailers for this because, yeah, they play those in movie theaters. That way they let you know that you can watch streaming and not go to the theater for it. One benefit of it not being in theaters is I watched this drunk. A yeah. lot of children present. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we invited them over. We're like, let's just get drunk and watch Turning Red. <laughs> yeah, so the movie is kind of framed, interestingly, in terms of the way that they present it. A lot of montage-y, flashback-y, kind of fourth wall-y kind of stuff. Wall-y, different one. It starts off like that, like, right away. Thrust you into this new sort of way that Pixar is telling a story which is kind of off-putting at first. I admit, even though I had a fine time with it, I won't lie, about five minutes in, I was like, this does not feel like a Pixar movie. It felt like it would have been one of their other regular animated Disney movies like Moana and stuff. It felt more in that camp than mm -hmm. Pixar. It's not as sophisticated. It feels more laid back. It's like It's basically tackling the subject of puberty. But also, it doesn't really do it with, like, how do I put it? It's not like trying to teach you anything mm -hmm. in a weird way. It's just kind of like tell a story. I feel like Pixar has really changed over the last, like, two movies, I guess, because Luca and now this. It's not like they're emotionally desolate. Like, emotions are in there, but mm -hmm. it's not really the main part. Like, back then, in old Pixar, you know, good Pixar, the golden age, everything was about emotion and, like, how it made you feel. And by the end of it, you're definitely going to have a little tear in your eye. These are just, like... I don't know, it seems like they're, they're trying to entertain you more with all the jokes and they're trying to step off the gas on like, driving into emotions, I guess. And I say that and it's literally a movie about emotions. Once you notice like what they're trying to do with the whole metaphor of the puberty and stuff, like, at first I was like, okay, this could go pretty well. I'm seeing the development here. But that's because initially when they bring it up and you're kind of realizing what they're doing, nobody else knows that she's a panda. Like, mm -hmm. it's... She sees herself as a panda, she envisions herself as a panda, she looks at her and she's like, oh no, I'm a furry freak, ah, what is happening to me? And it all seems very genuine and very relatable, even though I'm not a girl, so I did not go through any of this. <laughs> but it all seems like it made sense, I have no information on the subject, but we know what I'm trying to say. But then other people start to say, oh yeah, she's literally a red panda. So they kind of like step off of the metaphor, but then they still keep with the metaphor trying to have their cake and eat it too, because they literally have everybody around her was like, oh yeah, this is a thing that happens. Yeah, we come from a family where we turn into pandas. Mm -hmm. And then it just gets kind of ridiculous for me. That's old dead. Pixar. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's yeah. old Pixar would have been like, she was never a panda. At, at that point, I was thinking, oh, wow, this is actually going to turn like really sophisticated and get really deep here. But then they just make it a silly yeah. little tale about, oh, yeah, there's this magic power thing where we get cursed and turn into mm -hmm. pandas, like, which makes it a completely different movie, which is not in itself a bad movie because they have a decent, nice relationship between the daughter and the mother character, and they're like both trying to figure themselves out. But even then, that stuff I don't think really worked either because... The metaphor they're making with panda stuff being her aggression, her over-emotional stuff that leads to bad stuff throughout the whole movie. Mm -hmm. And the only time that once they found they were like, oh, yeah, just be you. That's you. That's the good stuff that you also can incorporate. That stuff is not even related to her being a panda. It just didn't really follow through as a metaphor for me. Trying to keep your side of stuff that maybe your parents don't agree with, which is a good narrative, but I just don't think it works, really. The characterization of the mom and stuff was really good, I think, mm -hmm. but it, I think it fell on deaf ears because it just doesn't really work out that way. I don't know. Yeah. To me. to me, perhaps it was the beer, but I noticed those things during and after, but I was having a good time with it. Yeah. Like, I, it got genuine laughter out of me. I do think it falls apart in the last, like, 20 minutes. Yeah. I don't really know what is going on there. The whole time you're like, oh, this is kind of cool because it's a smaller story because it's about a girl and yeah. she's in middle mm -hmm. school and stuff. And then they're like, why not we just have a Godzilla panda come out of nowhere and yeah. destroy a concert for the last 20 minutes of the movie? <laughs> it didn't mesh yeah. for me, at least. The climax that you're supposed to be tying everything in together. And they do have some nice scenes where they're in that portal part where she's mm -hmm. with the mom, which is a really young girl and stuff. Like, that's mm -hmm. a pretty good scene for what it is. But it's all in service of this freaking weird Godzilla red panda thing. Yeah. I, it was kind of out, out of place. I had a good time until then. And then I was like, okay, we've, we've gone too far. I like the movie as a, 
as a period piece. <laughs> yeah, it was a period piece. I and like we're watching it, and yeah. this doesn't feel like it's in present day. And you were like, "No, look at the phones." And yeah, it's like oh, I love flip phones. Weird. And then they played Cha Cha Slide, and I was like, "Oh no, okay, <laughs> this is totally." Then I had to Google it, and surely enough, it is in two thousand and two. Bootylicious is the centerpiece of a wonderful scene. Not belong in any Pixar movie, oh, but. No. I was all there for it. Maybe had they hinted at something fantastical outside of that? It's like you just place this panda in the real world and yeah. everybody's kind of cool with it, even the teachers. <laughs> <Yeah. and laughs> Nobody You're doing photo shoots. And I was <laughs> like, but I was also drunk, so I was like, yeah. is that okay? And there's like, like literally every kid in the school <laughs> taking photos with this red panda and then nothing leaks or anything. Yeah, it's, I, just, I don't know. it's not like. Is it national news in this world? Or At one point, she terrorizes the town, but then they're like, oh, yeah, well, yeah. probably escaped, a giant panda probably escaped from the zoo. I don't know what happens in Canada, so maybe this is a regular occurrence. I think it's lesser Pixar, but also it's not one of my least favorite. But that being said, though, I don't think every Pixar movie should have to be a total bummer. Mm -hmm. So I'm, that's why I'm okay with this one being light. It's just not great. And Luca having came out last year, there are a lot of pretty good parallels with that. But I just think Luca did a better job at like hitting home the scenes where, in particular, betraying your friend scene. It's literally the same scene, only it's done a bajillion times better, I think, in Luca. Mm -hmm. Because I think when they do it in Luca, like, the stakes are really high, and, like, he's literally gonna be freaking exiled, yeah. or, like, almost mm -hmm. murdered because he's a merman thing. And then he literally says, you know what? I'm gonna betray you and be a total asshole to my friend. And, like, literally, I remember watching it, and I was literally crying. I don't know why. <laughs> and it's like, a movie, it's not nearly as good as these other Pixar movies, but, like, that scene, is done so well where I was legitimately crying because I was like, that is a hell of a way to put mm -hmm. that scene on film. But And here they kind of try to do it again, but it doesn't work as good for me. Execution of it wasn't as high stakes or anything. It was kind of like you're watching a high school drama or a t sitcom kind of thing. As far as the rating goes, what do you all rate it? I liked it. I didn't like it as much as I probably liked Luca, but I still give it an 8. I think it's fine. I expect better from Pixar, and when they make another great movie, I am there. I just didn't quite make it this time, but I think it's a good enough time that passes the time. I, uh, I give it a seven. I just don't really think the whole thing worked nearly on the level that it seems like people thought it did. That, like, I haven't seen anybody think it was a masterpiece or anything, but I had a little bit higher expectations coming into it with the reviews and stuff, and then it just kind of seemed like a jumbled mess. So I give it a 5 out of 10. I don't even think the humor was that good for me to just be like, you know what, I at least had a fun time with it. That makes me a sad panda. I went and did my rankings. Those of you who watched the Pixar video, I have Turning Red at the number 23, just above Cars 3 and Cars 2. Oh my god. Fair or not fair, don't really care. I liked the good dinosaur and Bray better. I did a ranking last night, I put it at 19. If it were released through Illumination, it would be their best movie. Turning Red is still available on Disney+. Plus. Check it out if you haven't, if this sounds like something you'd be interested in. If you have seen it, let us know what you thought and why I suck. <laughs> Leave those comments. That makes me a sad panda.